Hello. Now, I'm going to try to go through the rationale behind the announcement by President Biden of the United States that more people should be compelled to have the COVID vaccine. Fortunately, we over here in the UK are distancing ourselves a little bit from this sort of attitude, but it does bear thinking about because what happens in America frequently comes over here, whether we like it or not. You see, there are two aspects to the direction that Biden is taking, and I'm going to talk about both, but I think this will have to be in two videos. Uh, and they're both equally applicable to the USA and Britain. So the first aspect I'm going to deal with, yeah, I'll just stick to uh, to this this particular thing, is the aspect of infection. And the second will have to do, well, with governance. Uh, as I said, I'll get to that in the next video. So let's start with the infection idea first. The rationale behind the coercion proposed by President Biden is that some people have an infectious, or rather actually, to be pedantic, a contagious disease that results in death and disability for completely innocent bystanders who are simply unfortunate enough to catch it from you, for instance, walking past you in the street when you happen to cough or if you happen to bump into them accidentally. Well, there is this chance. And we also know that not everyone who catches COVID is actually that badly affected. Some are, but many are just ill for a few weeks, well, or rather very uncomfortable for a few weeks, and then they're okay again. One of my sons and his wife got uh, COVID they, <laughs> over the Christmas holidays, which was no fun at all for them. But they were they were ill, but they weren't hospitalized or, or anything bad like that. And they were very tired for a couple of months afterwards. I know that, so you know it wasn't it wasn't pleasant, but it wasn't life threatening either. It's only life-threatening if you happen to have certain conditions, old age, for instance, disability, which prevents you from bouncing back. Nevertheless, the general wisdom is that having COVID, you're more likely to pass this on. So it goes like this. If you don't take active steps to prevent the transfer of this contagion, in this case, by taking a vaccination, then you are being socially irresponsible. Now, there would be an argument for that if the vaccination did stop you from transmitting the disease, but apparently it doesn't. I'm not an anti-vaxxer, by the way. I've had the two shots myself. Look, I've had asthma most of my life. When my mother died, I was in a very low state. I got a bit of a cold. I ended up with pneumonia. I, uh, you know, I know I had to take steps to protect myself. But it's become apparent that vaccinated people can still get and transmit the disease. They just don't get it as badly as if they weren't vaccinated. So the get vaccinated or, or be responsible for killing granny argument doesn't really work, does it? Now, well, actually, that's not what I wanted to talk about here. Let's just assume that the vaccination really did halt transmission, just for the sake of argument for the moment, then are we to agree with Biden's argument that society has no choice but to lose patience with those who irresponsibly transmit it? Well, let's project this strategy onto other socially irresponsible things, okay? For instance, how about religion? Now, we all know there's a religious ethic abroad at the moment circulating in the West that has resulted in the death and serious injury of many completely innocent bystanders who just happen to be unfortunate enough to catch it from the person who's infected by it. For instance, walking past them in the street when that person happens to blow up or when they get in front of the knife that that person is stabbing them with. Now, 
it's obvious that not everyone is so hated by the followers of this religion that they actually end up dead. Certainly, if they're too elderly to get out of the way or have some disability that slows them down, then they're more likely to be badly infected. Affected, sorry. And as we know, not every follower of this religious ethic is going to be that badly infected, I mean affected, that they wish to kill others or themselves in the service of their faith. And they don't blow up or knife innocent bystanders. They just get on with their lives. Still, by Joe Biden logic, we have to be careful, haven't we? Because they have that capacity. So what do we do about it? Do we mandate that this religion has to be vaccinated against in some way? By forced conversion, for instance, or the passing of some legal stricture uh, about the transmission of this religion, like making religious schools or places of worship illegal, for instance. They're doing that in China, as I understand. This isn't a rhetorical question. I'm asking for a friend, actually. A friend who ran a business training horses until she became disabled after losing her collarbone. She wasn't injured in a horse riding accident. She was injured when, as a perfectly innocent bystander, taking her two nieces to an Ariana Grande concert in Manchester in 2017. She happened to be too close to a chap called Salman Ramadan Abedi, who was affected, uh, in fact, um, uh, you know what, by a, a certain religious ethic and who blew himself up in the happy crowd of kids leaving the venue, killing 23 of them and injuring many more, including, as I said, my friend. I'm waiting to find out how patient President Biden would be with that sort of thing. Just a question. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.